I've been telling people about this show, Barflies and Broken Angels. They've been asking me, well, which one are you, a barfly or a broken angel? So I really had to determine which one I was. And I'm definitely a barfly because I built my wings on the way down. So I came down to earth 41 years ago today. a lot of time in bars in the 70s. A lot of time because I was a teen pregnancy in a Catholic high school. And I had one of the teachers my mother had when I went to high school, the teacher had switched to public school and he always loved to tell me the story of my mother in Catholic high school pregnant and he would always say, your mom was so special. There were always a bunch of, you know, there's always like a few girls that would get pregnant in high school and they'd always like hide under giant shirts and stuff but not your mother she walked around like she was carrying the messiah she was just so that was me and i was definitely part of i was a love child and my dad had a band and i would go to the band with my mom um go see the band at bars all the time and my earliest bar memories, I'm sure I was going to them before I even had memories, but I have lots and lots of memories of just having so much fun. Um, you, like napkins were the funnest thing for a kid in a bar. I, I, like, I loved the Shirley Temples, they were really great, so I'd get to have lots of Shirley Temples while my dad was playing and pretty much I would be totally unsupervised. And the napkins would, um, I liked to take napkins and put them on the bar and on the floor and, and then peel them off and see what paper stuck. And I thought it looked so amazing. Like I remember just seeing the, the little white on the black or on the bar and really pissing people off. Like, what are you doing? That's such a weird mess. What are we, you know? And then the other thing about the napkins besides making paper airplanes or clothes or, you know, little outfits for myself out of napkins, um, I would use them, you know, they'd be like this size. And I was so little, I remember using them as blankets when I got tired, and I'd curl up under the table or tuck myself under a bench. So those are my first barfly bar story things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bars are never somewhere I'm trying to go, but rather somewhere I end up. My father provided me reasons to go to bars in the 80s, just like he provided reasons in the 70s. But in the 80s, it was to pay off his huge cocaine debt to the mafia. Yeah. So I had to quit this awesome job. I had every teen girl's dream job at a super cute tchotchke shop where I got to unwrap, it was like Christmas every day, getting the shipments of like, you know, fairies on bubbles and nails hammered into shapes like anyone's profession, you know, like a teacher made out of nails, a lawyer made out of nails, a, just stuff like that. And I would dust and sell things and I loved this job. I got paid $10 an hour and I felt super grown up. And one day my dad actually came into the Crafty Fox and said, we have to talk, you need a job. And I said, uh, yeah, like you're visiting me at work, dad. And he said, no, real job. You're gonna start working at the old fashioned. And the Old Fashioned was a bar run by the Mafia that, you know, I knew that, in um, our town of Nyack, um, right up the river. So I was really, like, mad. I was like, I, I have a job. I, I don't want to work at the Old Fashioned. He was like, you have to work at the Old Fashioned. And he explained to me that if I didn't, it, he would be killed. <laughs> so I really guess I didn't have a choice. And... Um, I started working out the old fashioned and then I lost my pay because all my money went to, you know, that was the whole deal. I didn't get paid and I had to work there. Like from right after school until closing, till two or three in the morning, all through high school every night. And my dad would come in to that bar where I was working and kiss me like he loved me. And it was just like the most ridiculous thing, but he did have some friends that would like slip me 20s. And here's a poem about it. The Old Fashioned. So they wouldn't kill my father, so he wouldn't kill himself. I worked at the mafia-run restaurant. 
my father would come in to drink and give me a kiss as if he loved me, as if I were getting paid to work there, as if daughters were for cocaine debts, as if I didn't have homework to do. His friends would slip me 20s, 50s came from Billy and those sorry men flashing their sad smiles. I always smiled back, said everything was fine as I watched them take the same seats every night to root for the same team as they drank the same, cursing, laughing, smoking, snorting. The greasy kitchen saturated my uniform. The smell never left. I threw those clothes away. I'm glad I'm not a kid anymore. Wow. Bars provide an important service, a very important service. They give you a place to go when you have nowhere to go. Like on a super cold night when you're far from home and you're with your love. And he's wearing a trench coat. And you're wearing a really cute little, little tiny dress so it's absolutely too cold to be fucking al fresco. And it's a fucking emergency because you just put your finger inside the warmest, darkest part of your body and whipped it out and just put it right under his nose and it smelled like an orchid show in a hot house. <laughs> really, you need a place to go, so you go to a bar. Oh, God. But there's a little room in the back. It's closed. The bartender looks at you suspiciously. It really becomes clear you just have to stay at the bar. So what do you do? You keep your hands above the bar as much as you can except for one hand. You make sure your lover's trench coat is unbuttoned. You make sure you are holding his hand with your left hand on the bar so that it's very clear that your hands are above the bar. His other hand is on the other side of you. It's very intimate. You're having a little conversation. It is two lovers. And it's really hard. And you know how to work it. And the drinks come. And the cum comes. And it's all over your hand. And it's such a beautiful feeling. It's so slippery. It's so white. What do you do with it? You just keep rubbing and rubbing and rubbing because it just disappears. I don't know how that happens, but if you touch something enough, it goes away. I don't know why that works, but it does and your hand feels so good. And then two really cute boys come into the bar and start chatting with you and your lover because I don't know, you look like you're having fun or something. And when you um, introduce your love to the boys and introduce yourself, you shake their hands <laughs> and you give your um, trench coat love a little wink and you're really thankful for bars. 